cockpit, saddle height, tyre pressure, spares. There are so many things to think about when it comes to XC bike setup. It can be an absolute minefield, but don't worry. Today, I'm gonna to simplify it so you can get your ride dialed in. XC bikes, well, they're fast, speed, mile-munching machines. So having them set up bob-on is absolutely crucial. So we're gonna kick things off at the front and move back today. So we're gonna start with the cockpit. Right, let's crack on with the old cockpit position first thing, because there's a lot going on at the front that can really adjust the comfort of your ride. So you've got things like grip, diameter, essentially how thick is that grip? Now I run a fairly thick grip because I've got fairly large hands. I found that if I run a smaller, narrower grip, well then I'm actually curling my hand around the bar too much and it's causing me to grip too tight and therefore causing arm pumps. So have a think, try and match the grips to the size of your hands roughly. Moving in, then you've got brake lever and ship sort of shifter positions. So a rule of thumb used to be that when you are sitting on the bike and you run down the length of your arms in a straight line, your levers would follow that position. That's changed these days. And actually a flatter lever position seems to be slightly preferred. But again, this is hugely down to personal preference. So what I would say is maybe start with that sort of neutral, we'll call it sort of position where they follow the line of your arm, but adjust from there. If you find that once your hands are on the bars and you're standing up a lot out the saddle and you're actually having to reach down for the levers or you're putting pressure on your wrists, that's a big thing I find when I do, especially the big epic rides. When I'm actually standing up out the bars, Sometimes I'll find that there's a, a kink in my wrist and this is obviously affecting blood flow and causing some discomfort as well. So I'll then run my levers slightly lower so I'm not reaching up for them as much. Moving on, we've then got things like dropper button and shifter positions. Again, those wanna be positioned inboard where the paddle is gonna meet nicely to your thumb. You don't wanna to have to move your hand or shift your entire sort of thumb position just to be able to push or you know, press any buttons. Okay, so that's the cockpit looked at. We're gonna look at riding position, which will still incorporate the cockpit, but it's also now down to saddle height and seat position and things like that. Now this is really important because this is where it can make a monumental difference to the comfort that you're gonna be having on your XE bike when you're doing those big rides or out on a race. So bar width, when we're talking bar width, I'm six foot tall, fairly broad shouldered. And now I run a 760 mil wide bar, which in the XC world is fairly wide actually. And that is because due to my broad shoulders, if I'm riding a narrower bar, it actually sort of squishes me up at the front. And I don't want that. I want to be in control as well. So I run a wider bar. Saddle height, well, again, so when the saddle is at the highest position that your leg should be nearly extended, but with an ever so slight bend in the knee with your foot almost fairly flat, depending upon where you have your cleat positioned on your shoes, of course. Now that is still fairly true today. You should not have your saddle so that it is, when it's up at its highest points, your leg is locking out. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on your knee and on your joints down there. Saddle position, again, this is personal preference. So for me, it's actually a fairly level riding position. Bikes these days, they're getting longer in the reach and slightly slacker in the head angle, so they're more aggressive. But I still think you don't want to be riding so that you've got your handlebars too tucked up underneath you. So my, my saddle, it's in a position where that when I'm over the handlebars, when I've got my hands on the bars, I don't feel like there's too much weight forcing down on my arms and putting additional stress through my riding arms and through my riding arms. I only have one pair of arms. They're like my always arms. But you know what I mean, not too much added weight going through my arms there. And again, putting more pressure through my palms on my bars. Saddles, hugely personal preference. I wouldn't even want to start to tell you what saddle to use. Everybody's different, where your sit bones are, your riding position, how much, you know, sort of how comfy you get on with a saddle changes hugely. So experiment on this. When you find the one that's meant for you, ah, oh, the one, hold on to it. Keep hold of it because it's well worth it. And even buy a spare so that just in case they stop making it, you've got another one back up. Come on, that's it, it's working. Hey. You mock, but this is warm. Oh my God, let's keep warm. Keep warm, I'm keeping warm. Oh. Okay, ready for the next bit? We, I can't go into it. Do it. Let's talk wheels and tires next. So, I'm out of breath. 
Okay, so in the world of XC, weight is pretty important. So getting that wheel tire combo set up, absolutely bob on. Now what I go for generally is a very lightweight tire. So something like a 2.25 on the rear and a 2.35 up front, something a little bit wider so I can push it a bit harder in the turns without a worry of it, it going out. I'd normally go for the lightest casing possible to save weight. On this particular bike setup, I'm doing a 24 hour race on it. And because of that, there's a lot of cactus out here in Arizona. So I've actually upgraded to the XE Trail casing. So an ever so slightly thicker casing, just to help on those pinch punches on the, on the rocks and stuff as well, and hopefully stove off some of those annoying prickly cactuses out there. Similar width, and uh, again, it's, it's hard pack out here. It's a bit loose, but it's generally very hard pack and it's a long course with a lot of riding. So my setup has been adjusted for that. So we've got the Mezcal tires front and rear laced up to carbon wheels. I'd kind of recommend carbon wheels for XC. This is again, you know, there's really lightweight aluminium setups out there, but I like the stiffness and the power transfer that goes with a carbon wheel set. It just means that there's, there's very little flex. All the power you put down through the pedals is then transferred, there's no flex in the wheel and you're off accelerating. Well worth it and obviously, you know, great in the weight saving game. Here, it's a long time in the saddle. It's a lot of miles being crunched. I'm going all in for efficiency. So when you're setting your bike up for that, just have a little bit of a think of maybe what you ride the most, what the kind of trails are that you're going to be doing on your bike. And then when it comes to pressure, again, adjust this to suit. I'm actually running a, a real lightweight insert in the back of this, just because uh, I've been known to get a little bit rowdy on the back wheel and just hammer it through some sections. So that's just for extra security. They are obviously tubeless as well with a bit of sealant in there. And uh, at 82, 83 kilos, I think I am. There is 25 PSI in the rear and 23 PSI at front. Now that's a, my go-to pressures. I've used that for flipping ages. I know how it feels, I really like it. And that's something that I've experimented with over a lot of different tracks. So that's something I'd recommend. Once you get your bike sort of with the various parts on it that you want, just get the miles in, just miles, miles, miles. You'll get to feel how your bike's handling, how it's working. Does it feel like it's pushing out and like blowing out on turns? If it does, maybe you're not getting the grip. So that could be a different tire, different pressure combo. So again, it's all down with just having that bit of an experimentation and just really honing in those finer points. XC bikes, be it hardtail or full sus, they generally have around 100 mil of travel. This one's actually 120 front and rear. There's some out there which are 60 mil. So it varies, but my line of thinking when it comes to suspension on an XE bike is because there's less of it, it, you need to have that minimum amount that you've got working really well. So getting it dialed in absolutely perfect is almost even more important because you ain't got much to get you out of jail. There ain't like a big 170 mil travel there to go hammering through. So having it set up perfectly is really important. This has a dual lockout. The squid lock underneath here locks out both at the same time. First up, make sure that's working. Having your lockouts working for long drags on fire roads, uphill sprints, things like that is incredibly useful. Then when it comes to first up pressures, you're gonna wanna run, I would recommend around a 25% sag. You might like it a bit firmer, you might like it a little bit softer, but 25% I feel is like a good go-to number. With me, I then run a few tokens, both front and rear, so that actually, it ramps up pretty quick so that I can really push it around and really muscle it through stuff. But if I was to convert this, or when, maybe, keep your eyes peeled, maybe on another video, to an out and out XC race weapon, I may well go down to a Fox 32. But get out on the trail, put a sort of measure it so you've got your 25% sag, and then go from there. Right, this one's all about your optional extras. Look how much it's snowing here in Arizona. This is bonkers, I wasn't expecting this. Optional extras. Now what I'm talking about here is things you've got strapped to the bike, maybe your Garmin and things like that. So it's having things that you might need for a long ride. So, and just having like the, the right basics basically. So on this bike, I've got a multi-tool at the bottom of the Topic bottle cage there with a chain tool on it. I've also got a spare tube, uh, tire levers on that as well. And then in my pockets, I will have a CO2 inflator and the obviously adapter to go on it. That way I can fix pretty much any 
quick fix problem that I'll need to get me out of any kind of trouble and get me back home. And it's the same with my Garmin. Do you know what? I've got the Garmin mounted out front on this rather than on top of the stem or anything like that. That way I can see it easily. So when I'm over the bars, I can see my numbers. And just at the right angle, it's, it's the little things, but they do add up to just having that real perfect setup exactly how you want it. Right, holy moly, look at the weather. We are done in the snow of Arizona. That was a play on word for Arizona. Maybe not cool. Look, did those setup tips help? Let me know in the comments down below. How do you have your XC bike set up maybe? As always, thank you for watching. Give the channel a little love. A like and a subscribe goes a long way to bringing you cool content. But from me, from the snow, from Arizona, I'll see you next time.